Quilts in the Underground Railroad, fact or fiction? You decide. I'm Jan Doyle, and we'll be right back. Railroad is mentioned in every children's social studies book in elementary school. But they really only, my experience has been, they really only give it a quarter to a uh, half a page, at most a page. And then it's passed by and you go on to other topics of that era. But when I was an elementary school teacher, for some reason, I really was drawn to this particular topic. And then I ended up my years as a teacher uh, teaching literacy, and I discovered this book as a literacy teacher. It's called The Secret to Freedom. And one reason why I particularly liked the book was besides being a, uh, a story about the Underground Railroad, on the back of it, they had quilt patterns. And these are patterns that might have appeared in quilts. and children had more of a close-up view of them, but even better than that, on the back cover, they talked about what these patterns meant. So I just became more and more interested in the topic of this Quilts and the Underground Railroad. Then when I retired, a friend of mine showed me this book. It's a book for quilters called The Underground Railroad. And what this book advocates is making one block of several different blocks and making what's called a sampler quilt. I decided I liked the topic so much that I was going to go back into the school systems and give presentations with new information that I learned that teachers don't have readily available to them because they don't have the time to do the research. And so I started making Underground Railroad quilts. This is one of them, and this I'm outlining what would be one block of that quilt. Now this, and then what you do is you put the blocks together, and you and you just keep on doing that, keep on making the blocks, and you have what's called, you know, this is a lap size quilt. When I go into uh, classrooms, and we start, one of the things we talk about is the name of the quilt. And does anybody have any idea what you would call this quilt? Well, one name used in the Underground Railroad is monkey wrench. And it comes from the term using a monkey wrench. If you notice, I can put this next to it, and there's a similarity between the block and the monkey wrench. And the monkey wrench was actually the name of one of the slaves who worked as a blacksmith. And he was one of the most important slaves on the uh, plantation because the slave owner could rent him out to other plantations and make money off him besides the fact of doing the work at the home plantation. But it had an interesting byproduct from being rented out. This one person got to know the lay of the land. Most slaves stayed right where they were born. So he's going out to other plantations talking to other slaves and learning things that really was not available to people who stayed on the plantation. And that's where they started spreading the information and the knowledge about the Underground Railroad. So at the presentations that I do with children, we talk about that, but I also make sure they understand Monkey Wrench Warning isn't the only name for this quilt. It has other names. Another name that is called Lincoln's Platform, which makes a lot of sense because Lincoln was president during the time of the start of the Civil War. In fact, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that later. Other names I really don't get is Churn Dash. That doesn't make any sense to me. Or Hole in the Barn Door. I do get that one, Hole in the Barn Door. But I think what I came across from came around from this is that a quilt, and it's also actually confusing to a lot of people, a quilt can be known by many, many names. Another um, quilt that I, I just want to talk, but since it's right up here, another quilt that I enjoy is this one. It's called Drunkard's Path. 
And the drunkard's path quilt is a quilt that if someone held it on the um, barn door or their house or on the fence post, it meant when you were escaping to freedom to go in a crooked way, excuse me, not the same, not the same direction. And I forgot to mention that when this is displayed, this was a warning quilt to people on the plantation that they were going to be taking off that night. At the beginning of the broadcast, I mentioned that there's a controversy. And you might be thinking, well, what is this controversy about? Well, believe it or not, it's a huge one. And it's really kind of stemming from this 1994 book, Hidden in Plain View. A woman by the name of Mozella Williams started talking to a reporter initially, an historian, about how she knew that quilts were in the Underground Railroad. And because of that book, and because of all the information in here, it spawned many, many children's books. And I have a few of them here, including the one I showed you earlier. And they're great books. I suggest if you have any interest, you might want to get them. One is called Under the Quilt of Night, which is fun. The Patchwork Path, which kind of goes along with the, A Drunkard's Path. Another one is Sweet Clara in the Freedom Quilt. And they also bring up other ideas that a quilt doesn't have to be just one pattern, but more like the beginnings of a map where they actually have locations and trails that they can go on. So there's not, there's not even one way to do an Underground Railroad quilt. Well, the problem with this particular book and with historians is that they say it cannot be collaborated in any way. It's just one person and it's oral history. But if you do any research in this, oral history, oral tradition is very, very is a very valid point. But there's no independent collaboration. And from talking to some people, um, some people who are very much into this topic, they need two separate uh, accounts other than this book, other than tradition. I don't know how you're going to get it if it's just oral. And slaves would have a tendency to use up their quilts. They wouldn't be decorative and hanging around and because they were utilitarian. They weren't what I make a quilt for, like this This will never see my bedspread. This will never be used for warmth or comfort. And so therefore, obviously, it's going to probably outlive me. And so, but that wasn't the case during that time of the Underground Railroad. So I really hope you give it thought. What do you think? I have an intellectual thought. I understand it. And I also have um, a feeling in my heart what I want to be true. And sometimes they do battle and sometimes they don't. But it really is up to you. Another, and of course, there's a slew of books, um, nonfiction books. Scholastic is always a good name to pick up. And this says uh, if you traveled on the Underground Railroad. So I highly recommend. So there's a lot of, and if you're an adult looking, reading, watching this, children's books are often overlooked as a wonderful source of information. They're quick, fast, and easy reads for adults, and you get right down to the pithy, the pithy knowledge that you really want. I use this book, The Secret to Freedom, as a um, inspiration for a storytelling feature I do when I go into classrooms. I give the historical part, and then I do historical, uh, do storytelling. And I have to tell you, I use my hat, and I, I made this hat. Actually, I, I really love it. And I put it on, and I tell the kids, when I put this hat on, I'm no longer Jan Doyle, but now I'm Auntie Jan. And I knew I had the kids in the storytelling part of the presentation because many times when I take it off, I hear kids ask me, well, who are you now? So I wouldn't wear this hat out in public, but I do love it. Other quilts I have here to show you uh, is this particular, I couldn't put them all up on the stand, but this particular quilt is called the Underground Railroad Quilt. And if, when you hold it up, you'll notice that there, it's directional. And I'll have the children come up and we point out the direction. And if this was displayed on a clothesline or on a fence post or on a building, that's supposed to be the way the um, people who are escaping go. But if you take it and you turn it, the direction changes. And so we have a discussion about that. 
One of my favorite quilts that I enjoy is this one. And it's called the Bear Claw. Now, as I, and when I hold it up, you probably can see how it could possibly be the Bear Claw. But I have to tell you a story. Uh, years ago, I went to Alaska. I wanted to photograph the salmon swimming upstream. And we were told by the guide that when we walk through the woods to get to this particular spot, as we go through the woods, we go like this, hey bear, hey bear, hey bear, and that will scare off bears. I was very, very comfortable in that knowledge, and I thought, well, no bear's gonna come after me. And it wasn't until I got home that I realized how naive I was because that's not gonna scare off any bear. All it did was make me feel better, which I suppose was their point. But the bear claw quilt, the reason that's important is because a lot of um, escapes happen during the spring. What else happens during the spring? The bears are coming out of hibernation. So if there's a lot of bears in a particular area, that is displayed to give a warning for it. Another quilt that's enjoyable and also has a lot of meaning is this one. And it's called the Wagon Wheel, I'll just, just about half of it. And as you look on the monitor, or as I look on the monitor, you can see it's circular and it has a middle in here, right in here. And sometimes quilts, uh, quilters will call this the Dresden Plate, and, which is a valid name. But for the Underground Railroad, it's the Wagon Wheel. And the purpose of that is that if, they, if that was displayed, then if someone's coming into the plantation, they knew most likely that person was sympathetic. And there would be a fake bottom. They could hide on the uh, fake bottom underneath the wagon wheel, underneath the wagon. They could hide on the flatbed of the wagon and things would be put over them. Or if somebody, a woman was particularly fair skinned, they could sit in as a passenger and have a bonnet that maybe covered most of their face and they could go out that way. So the wagon wheel was a, a particularly important quilt. One quilt that I like to show the children that I never finished because I wanted them to see the sewing was the crossroads quilt. This quilt, and we talk about what the crossroads are and what uh, the significance and meanings, how they can go either way. But I like them to see, I like children to see the back of the quilt so they can just sort of get a sense of how much sewing goes into this. I've always have been sorry that in most school systems, uh, home ec has been eliminated. And I understand why they have to make room for the computer sciences, which are very important. But children today are not getting the experience of sewing on a button, of doing hand stitching, creating, creating outfits from fabric, and it's really, really important. So if you're a parent or a grandparent, you might want to pick up one of these books and start teaching your children how to sew, how to make patchworks, how you can take old clothes and, and cut them up and, and put them into recycle, repurpose them into a wonderful design. It's, it's just a skill. If you can sew on a button and when you're uh, uh, eight years old, you won't forget it when you're 80. It's really an important skill. One of the quilts that I really was not going to make because I didn't like it, I didn't care for the pattern, I thought it was very, very basic, was this particular quilt. And it's the ships. And I didn't like this quilt because it's a, to me it's a children's, it's a children's, like a preschool quilt. You make it for somebody who's having a child and you give it to them. But this quilt, as I studied more and did more information, of course I knew that the slaves came over on a boat and were brought ashore and, and sold and auctioned off. Of course I knew that. But in my studies, I learned that in Africa, they actually had warehouses where they would capture slaves and warehouse them in, for up to two or three years until someone came and wanted them. And that was just an interesting, I didn't realize it. I thought it was, they just grabbed them from the fields, threw them in, threw them in a boat. I also learned from my investigations that even though slaves appeared on boats and had many times had to do the, the hard manual work on a boat, they would help other escaping slaves. 
So when that word got around that a particular boat and slaves were sympathetic, it was also another way to escape from down south to up north. The, there are other quilts that I use. Um, when I started with the children, this is a, a very small quilt. It's called Tumbling Blocks. This could, this could be the beginning of if you post it on a fence that the kids would take off. Uh, one thing I like to share with the children, and this is something that you can find at the local fabric stores, I think it's really, really important that they have a sense of place. And this, um, I, oops, excuse me, this I had to make into a, um, it's a map of the United States, and this was quilted. I hope I have it right side up. And you can follow the direction. We, the storytelling feature starts in the south, and we can follow it to Ohio, and then how they go, how that's a very significant midsection and how they go north from that. But one particular book that I would like to share with you is this particular book. It's Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. And the interesting thing about this book is that when I was a, in college, I was told not to read this book, that it was very, very, very poorly written, it's boring and don't bother. Well, of course I listened to that. And I also, even if you go online and Google it now, you're also going to see the same review for that book. I started reading this book, and I found this to be the first book that put my head and my heart together, and I could feel what happened during that time. Harriet Beecher Stowe captured our hearts, and it, it was a bestseller during her time, only selling less than the Bible. If you do nothing else, you might want to read this book. And then you might want to take a ride up to Hartford, Connecticut, and see her home. There's nothing more enjoyable, for me anyway, to have read a book, have a sense of feeling of place, and being able to walk through that person's real life house to see where she slept, to see where she ate, to see where she entertained guests. On the wall in the kitchen or in the walkway as you, or the hall as you go in, there's a sign that's framed and said, and this is from President Lincoln, you're the little lady that started the Civil War. Very, very interesting. And while you're there, don't forget to go next door. It's right next door, hop, skip, and a jump to go see Mark Twain's house. Very, very interesting. His house is more elaborate. His house is more, captures the attention more of people. Her house is plain, simple, New England-like. But it was, she was extremely, extremely important in our history. One last thing I'd like to show you is that I have fun showing the children and talking to the children about if their mamas have to complain about doing the laundry, how would they like to do the laundry on this apparatus? It's a washboard. So when I give the talks to children, they get a little flavor of the history. They have a chance to touch some of the artifacts. Uh, adults have an opportunity to hear the real story behind and hear a little bit about the fact or fiction. And I try not to give an answer, and I'm not going to give you an answer today. I'd like you to, if you have an interest in this, do some more reading on your own. If you have um, grandchildren, these are wonderful books to pick up for grandchildren or your own children. And if you have any inclination, if you, what you think you might want to sew, you might want to go to a local quilt guild. They're absolutely phenomenal people in these guilds. And you'll pick up value, valuable information and you'll learn everything you need to learn by workshops and demonstrations how you too can make a quilt. So quilts in the Underground Railroad, fact or fiction, you decide. Thanks.